program is provided in part by viewers like you who are proud supporters of Nebraskans for public television. Let's take it over to PA announcer Barry Moore. He has tonight's player introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this game is for the C1 championship of the state of Nebraska. Unfortunately, both teams can't win, but they both had outstanding seasons and a great tournament, and we ask that whoever you are, wherever you're from, you get up and give these girls a hand for being where they are. Thank you, thank you very much. And now let's meet the teams. Their score will be beneath home on the scoreboard. Their record is 20 wins and six losses. Welcome Centennial High School. The non-starters are Jenny Lindhorst, number two. Number five, Corina Tomes. Number six, Megan Leaf. Number 10, Katie Lindhorst. Number 11, Aaron Litke. Number 13, Paige Heine. Number 15, Julianne Holman. The starters, number one, Lori Hyde. Number three, Kelly Heyman. Number eight, Andrea Swanson. Number nine, Keely O'Hare. Number 12, Casey Winkleman. Number 14, Andrea Sullivan. The coach is Phyllis Honor. Her assistants are Rhonda Haybrook and Becky Weimer. And their score is under guests. Their record is 28 wins and no losses. Welcome, Columbus Scotus. The non-starters are number two, Keisha Kudrin. Number five, Shanna Melliger. Number 10, Lori Beller. Number 11, Amy Hash. Number 12, Kristen Blair. Number 13, Ashley Van Dyke. The starters, number one, Stephanie Cruz. Number four, Amanda Sackett. Number six, Megan Pyle. Number seven, Julia Grennan. Number eight, Heather Van Ackern. Number nine, Michelle Moser. The coach is John Peterson. The assistants are Janet Tooley, Julie Blaser, and Wendy Willits. The officials for the match, Ted Harshbarger and Karen Sloan. And now, let's play volleyball. Well, you know it's official when Barry Moore says, let's play volleyball. That is the official cry of the state volleyball tournament to get things started, and he will do just that, as will these two teams, Columbus Scotus and Centennial. The key for Centennial, Kathy? Well, um, they, they're really going to have to stay balanced with their defense. They're going to try and serve tough to try and limit the options of SCOTUS. SCOTUS has several um, strong offensive weapons. I mean, they've got um, three or four players, three players that have over 100, 100 um, kills and 100, 137 by Megan Piles. And Van Akron has 194, Grennan 210. So there's a lot of offensive weapons over there. And so they're really going to try and, and keep them off balance and kind of control that. 
And then they're just really good. They have nothing to lose out here. And, and so they need to just step up there and, and try and create some problems with their offense um, as well. They've got some strong attackers as well. And so they're kind of varied also. So several people attacking. And that's really what they need to do, keep them off balance. So we'll see what they can do. Head coach Phyllis Honor of Centennial says one of the Broncos' problems this year has been slow starts. I would think tonight would be a bad time to have a slow start against a team like SCOTUS. Right, and that can really set the tone. You know, um, we saw earlier today, too, um, a team didn't jump out right away and get a good start. It took them a while to get going. And that happens sometimes here in the in the finals, and in this, this is a different atmosphere and a big game. Everybody um, around here in Pershing, it's a great place. Um, they just really need to embrace that and, and get out there. But that's what she said happened, too, in their first game here at state tournament. Lori Hyde serves, and the serve just wide. So the side out to SCOTUS right away. Trying to aim that serve a little bit. Nearly caught it inside the line, but did not. And so Michelle Moser will serve for SCOTUS. Quick attack and a good up by SCOTUS in the back row. Moser sent over. Tapped back by Heyman and into the net. A point for Columbus SCOTUS as Heyman couldn't control herself. Got too close right. to the net. She saw it come over. Tried to react real quick and just over reached it right through the net. one nothing SCOTUS and a net serve by Michelle Moser gives it back over to Centennial where Andrea Swanson, 5'11 junior, will serve. Right-hander sends it over, nearly the ace serve, good up, and a free ball for Centennial. Hyde, quick set in the middle, and that one just wide off the hands of the middle attacker Kelly Heyman, and it goes back over to SCOTUS. Megan Pyle, just a freshman, and she will serve. Winkleman to try, blocked back, and a big block set up in the front row by Julia Grennan, the 5'10 senior. She is the anchor to this SCOTUS team. And she, she is going to create some problems up there as a big blocker, but also on her transition, she is a great attacker. And a violation on the serve, an ace serve gives it a 3-0 lead to SCOTUS. Centennial a little late to react to that serve, and it cost him a point. Kind of rolled right up the arms. 5'8", freshman Megan Pyle. 3-0. She's serving very tough right now. Free ball for Scotus. Cruz sets it, and Grennan mistimed her jump. She was a little bit early there. She's on her way down and tried to make a play on it by trying to pass it over, but when you're in midair, it's difficult to, to make some of those changes that quick. She's up. On the way down, you can see that in the replay. Cruz will try this time for Van Akron, and she gets the kill with the touch off the arm of Andrea Swanson, and it goes back over to Scotus. Scotus leading 3-0 here in game one of the C1 final, and Kristen Blair checks into the game for Scotus. Amanda Sackett to the bench. Grennan to serve. Deep serve and an ace serve for Julia Grennan. Centennial Starting slow, that was Phyllis right. Honor's big concern tonight was that they would start slow. And really, Scotus is serving tough here, and, and it's difficult to get anything going if you're not ball handling, and, and um, that's what's happening here for Centennial. Brennan to serve. Another tough serve to handle. Sent over, and now a free try. Van Akron down the line. Great placement on the shot. It's 5-0 Scotus here in game one. Great placement and just strong attack. She really busts in hard after the ball and does a nice job. Phyllis Honor looks up, sees a 5-0 deficit, and will call a timeout, her first timeout, here in game number one. 5-0 SCOTUS with a lead. Phyllis Honor in her 29th year talking with her troops. 20 and 6 Centennial is after the two wins in the tournament. They beat Class B state tournament team Elkhorn, but they lost twice to Pius, and that's really their tests, kind of the comparisons in the schedule between Centennial and SCOTUS. SCOTUS beat both Pius and Elkhorn. In fact, they've beaten everybody. They're 28-0. Right, and, and I know Centennial, that's, they feel though that some of those have been helpful for them. They've pushed their teams in tight situations, and, and they maybe haven't won, but I feel that they've learned from that by playing some of that tougher competition. Julia Grennan to serve. Her serve falls right in. Miscalculation 
by the back row of Centennial to let that one fall in. Everybody seemed to be looking for someone else to pass that, and nobody really communicated, and an easy ace serve for Grennan. Probably the easiest one she's seen all year. Six nothing. SCOTUS with the advantage. Quick set, big block up front from Blair. And that one tapped over and finds a home on the far side. Centennial gets the side out. Nice job. You'll get a chance to see O'Hare here. Does a nice job. Just places it right to the sideline and tight to the net. Difficult ball to get out. And now Keeley O'Hare, the junior, will go back to serve. Tough serve, nearly the ace. SCOTUS does a great job to keep it alive. And then Centennial can't finish. Great hustle by Van Akron. And Centennial couldn't take care of the bas or of the uh, volleyball when it got over the net. Wasn't quite sure who was going to take it. Communication, that's the ball they should really take and thrive off of and drive back at them. Big block up front by Blair off the Winkleman attack. And then it falls, a violation against Centennial and a point for SCOTUS. It's 7-0 SCOTUS, the Shamrocks over the Centennial Broncos. Really just some lack of communication and assertiveness by Centennial right now. Heidel set it up. Blair with the block. Now they'll try Van Akron again. That one wide, and it tried to go off the top of the block. Instead, it went off the top of the tape and rolled and away. rolled sharp out of bounds. Centennial needs to find a string of points here. Down the line, and that serve is wide. Another service error. So as tough as SCOTUS is serving, Centennial is really struggling on serve. Right, they're really not, they're trying to go tough, but they're making too many errors right now. They just need to get it in, give them a chance, and then kind of work into the toughness maybe. Try for Sullivan. Good up in the back row by O'Hare. Now they'll try Swanson. Good up by Pyle. Far side, terrific Great hustle by O'Hare. Tapped at the net. Tapped again at the net and falls off the hand of Andrea Sullivan and Centennial gets the serve back. Nice job, we saw some good defense in the back row by O'Hare for Centennial. Tight ball up front, nice job. Um, Andrea Sullivan finishes the play. Sullivan back to serve, good receive by Pyle. Centennial's gotta keep it alive, they cannot. Quick set that time for SCOTUS, gets them the side out as they set it up very quickly. And they're good at that. They really try and push a faster tempo offense, and that's successful. They try to um, get themselves in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and, and so they really push that quick offense if they can. Amanda sack it in. Centennial tries, and over the net and through. Kelly Heyman gets the kill and gets the side out back for the Centennial Broncos. That net, both teams kind of rolled it across there, some in, some out, and that net's kind of being a factor here. 7-0 SCOTUS in game one. Cruz, quick set, and a big kill by Julia Grennan goes right through the Centennial block. Grennan's just really so powerful and strong when she's up in the net. She's just doing a nice job and combine that with the quickness of their attack. She's really doing a great job for her team. Michelle Moser serving for SCOTUS, nearly the ace, and it is the ace, as it, again, it rolled right up the arms of Casey Winkleman. They're really just struggling. Not, they're not moving their feet. They're kind of leaning with their upper body to try and adjust for the serve. And they really, if they move their feet, they'll be able to make that play on the ball. You can kind of tell they're a little tight. Michelle Moser to serve. 8-0 SCOTUS in game one. Hyde will set it up in the middle for Swanson. Sent over by Heyman. Good up by Grennan. Pile the try. Swanson. Good rally going on here. Pyle now blocked back. Straight up coverage. Grennan sends it over. Back set, tapped over by O'Hare. Battle at the net, Grennan sends. Can Centennial take advantage? In the middle, good up by Pyle. Grennan to finish. Nice rally. Both teams really did a good job defensive wise and, and Grennan up front. She's just really working hard to get in there. The middle blocker, Heyman, went up with the setter, left her a free court swing out. And timeout taken by Phyllis Honor, her second timeout of game number one, and SCOTUS leading it 9-0 over Centennial. 
Centennial Broncos at 18 and six on the season, but they did lose four of their first eight games. They started off the season four and four and only lost two down the stretch. They lost to Sandy Creek and they lost to Grand Island Central Catholic. Early in the season, they struggled trying to find their way with some new starters, but Phyllis Honor has her team on the right path and pays to come into the state tournament on a hot streak and That's Centennial right. came in winning six of eight. Moser to serve, it's 9-0. Set it up in the middle for Heyman. O'Hare to try. Cruz will try Pyle. Pyle with the kill off the, har off the arm of Paige Heine. Pyle is really doing a nice job. She's being really aggressive out there. Um, she's only a freshman, but really she isn't playing like a freshman out there on the court. Very confident and aggressive. 10 nothing SCOTUS. O'Hare. Great up. Grennan to try through the block, and again the kill by Julia Grennan. She came in with 210 of them, and look at this one. Here you go. She's just really strong. The block's up there. It's good setup, but she's just coming with so much power. She's pushing them over. 11-0. Scotus with the lead. Heyman to try. Cruz will set far side for Pyle. Good up by Heine. But she can't get any of her teammates to corral it at the net, and it's another point for Scotus. Great up. Just kind of a, actually a little chaos, I think, up front. Who's going to go for it? Kind of bumping into each other and... Too bad they worked hard to get that ball up. 12-0 SCOTUS. Try that far side line, and it's just wide off the arm of Andrea Swanson. And it's 13-0 SCOTUS. Moser's long, and finally a side out to Centennial. Scotus has only been pushed to three games three times in the entire season. Just to illustrate the dominance that they have walked through the 98 season with. Brennan, a little off balance shot, but it falls. And when you're 28 no, those kind of things happen. That's right. You just make plays out of uh, out of um, kind of broken plays there. And Brennan does a great job. It's kind of a testament to her athletic ability. She's early and she still manages to get a team kill. Megan Pyle will serve for SCOTUS. In for Centennial, Megan Leach. She goes into the back row. Towards the corner wide and another point for SCOTUS. And here's game point number one and a chance to throw the shutout in game one of the C1 final. Serving is Megan Pyle, the freshman for the game. Nearly the ace. Good job by Good Heine muscle. to keep it alive, but Brennan's there to finish. And game one goes to the Columbus Skoda Shamrocks in dominating fashion, 15-0. 15-0 SCOTUS wins over Centennial in game number one, and Centennial was really overwhelmed in that first game by SCOTUS. Right. Really tough serving by SCOTUS played a big factor in there, and here again we'll see in the as the final serve is made how how difficult um, a time they're having with their, their serve receive, setting up a situation where Greenwich can just finish the play with a ball tight at the net. Another look at game point, the ace serve by Megan Pyle to give SCOTUS the 15-0 win in game one. Heine tried to get it over. She did, but right into the arms of Julia Grennan, and that's the, the worst place to have right. it if you're a Centennial that's, fan. That's not where they wanted it to go, but they were just did a great job hustling even to keep it alive in that situation. So SCOTUS wins game one handily, 15-0. And what's Phyllis Honor telling her team in the huddle over there getting ready for game two? Okay, we've done this before. We had some slow starts here. We know they're a good team, but we've got nothing to lose out there. We've got a ball handle. I think that's the key. We, they missed also several serves also in that first game, and that makes a big difference. Look at ace serves. Columbus Scotus had four ace serves in the game and, and several other serves that created problems. They got free balls over. Look at the kill differential, too. Um, Definitely Columbus Scotus is uh, dominant in that area as well. 
defensive-wise. They really controlled in all areas, and, and obviously the 15-0 score shows um, the dominance as well. Just three kills for Centennial, 10 for Scotus, and Diggs 15 to seven. Scotus was flying all over the floor. They made the plays, they found holes for the ball to fly into, and it's just, it's what they've done, frankly, all season long. They have dominated most teams they have played. They went to three games with Pius, they went to three games with Grand Island Central Catholic, and they went to three games yesterday with Lincoln Lutheran, and that's it. Yeah, and, and and that's good for them to stretch them, and that kind of too helps them so that as they come into here, they know no matter what, and they come in here very confident knowing that they handled those situations, and, and that throughout the season when they had, um, again, with Pius, that, that just shows um, the composure that they have and um, what a great team they are. The fans from SCOTUS, very happy they made the trip south from Columbus to check out their Shamrocks. The folks who traveled from Utica, where Centennial High School is located, are hoping for a better showing in game number two because game one was a little rough for the Centennial Bronco fans tonight. But it's a, just a tribute to their great season and their great run in the tournament that they're here at all. They're the seventh seed, for crying out loud. They beat the number two team. They beat the number three team. I don't know how much more you can do except beat the number one team, right. and they have to do that in two straight games now. This is their chance to do that, but they need to feel good about being here because they they made some major um, milestones here, in the, even the last day here, as they've made it to the finals. So they really need to focus on that. You can see their smiles on their face. They just need to go out there and have fun here and, and play, play hard, and then they'll play well. It's been nine years since Centennial High School made it to the state tournament let alone the finals. And they've taken advantage of the opportunity to be here. Three, three state championships in the 80s, but none in the 90s, not even any appearances. Now they'll try to prolong it here in game two, and a good start for SCOTUS as they come up with the point off the serve from Amanda Sackett. There you see, get the ball there, not really getting it to their setter in good condition for her to make a good set to her, set, her attackers. Tough receive, Winkleman got it over. And then a miscommunication, a rare one by Scotus and a side out to Centennial. one nothing Columbus Scotus in game two. Here you get a chance to see that again. You see a left-handed attack here by Heyman. That's maybe catching him off guard a little bit too. Big swing in the front row from who else but Julia Grennan as she came up swinging freely and got the kill. Here you get a chance to see that again. She's just really tough. Tough, aggressive attacker. She hits the tape, but still has enough on it to get it over. one nothing, Scotus. Hyde will set it up in the middle for Heyman, and Heyman with a big kill. And that's the first time tonight we've seen Centennial get their offense really where they right. wanted it. They finally lit things up there. Nice job, nice connection uh, between um, Stephanie Cruz and Heyman. Set up, back set for Grennan. Blocked, kept alive by Scotus. Pyle passes it over. Good hustle by Hyde to keep it alive. Battle at the net, blocked back. Hyde to try Winkleman. Winkleman down the line. And Centennial finally breaks through. 16 straight Scotus points before the Broncos score. I think really that, that kill by Heyman earlier, they kind of got a little confidence off that, and they're really kind of sparking up here a little bit. Set up for Pyle, and Pyle with the kill ends the brief Bronco run. It's 1-1 in game two. Here you get a chance to see that again. A one-on-one -on -one situation is what SCOTUS is really working to try and get, and, and they did there and were successful. A serve for the Shamrocks makes it 2-1. Credit Megan Pyle during the season. She led the team with 38 service aces. Tack on another one there. Her serve, though, is wide. She follows up the ace with the error, and Centennial gets it back on the side out. Heyman to serve. Quick set for Van Akron. Centennial, good job by Heyman just to get it over. Cruz sends it on the second pass. Through the block and home goes Keely O'Hare. Nice job by O'Hare. She had a couple nice attacks early, or defensive in the first game. She's doing a nice job here in front row. Will I get 2-2 tie here? 
serve is just long off the hands of Kelly Heyman. So Centennial having a hard time getting any run it's, going. It's, it's hard to, if you're missing serves, it's difficult to score, obviously. 2-2 two, two the score. Scotus won game one, 15-0. Quick set, good up by Grennan. Van Akron to try, and that one using the tape again. Scotus really using the top of the net here tonight. They've had it, and, they, and the, the roll, they, they push it aggressively. She's really trying for that sharp shot. The ball was set inside, and she really worked to get her hand on it and kind of rolled it right off the net. Grennan with the ace serve. It looked more like a pinball than a volleyball as it ricocheted around <laughs> three Broncos. Of... She's really done a nice job serving, too. She ran four or five in, in game number one back there. 4-2 Scotus leading in game two. Good job by Hyde to handle that one right near the post. Locked away by Sullivan. Van Acker to try. That one towards the corner and just in and a point for Scotus. And that's one of those situations where it seems like all the breaks are going your way. Yeah, you see a strong attack and um, left side thought that ball, she was on the sideline, it was out and she had just got herself positioned in a little too far. 5-2 SCOTUS in game two. Hyde, quick set, tapped over by O'Hare. Battle at the net, and into the net goes Casey Winkleman, and it's a point for SCOTUS. Good call by the official. Ball was tied up there, and Winkleman was trying to be aggressive and kind of got off balance and hit the front of her shirt in the net. Grennan. O'Hare will pass it over. Free ball now for SCOTUS. What will they do with it? Go to Blair for the kill. Nice job. If you're giving Scotus a free ball, you really make it difficult on yourself. And you'll get a chance here to see again. Blair comes in. Nice there. We're going to really push that quick transition. Phyllis Honor with her first time out in game number two. Scotus leading it 7-2. to two. If you're just joining us, our champions from earlier today, in Class C2, Republican Valley with the win. Giltner in D2 picks up the championship. Class A was Northeast in a three-game match against Pavilion La Vista. And Clay Center moments ago won the Class D1 championship in a hard-fought three-game match with the Sterling Jets. And some good ones today, two two-gamers and two three-gamers. So we've split right down the middle. So we'll see what happens. We've got two more. This one, we won't call yet. 7-2 Scotus with the lead in game two. Sullivan with the kill, and that's why we won't call it, because it's easy to come back if you can get the ball to Andrea Sullivan. That's right. And in this game, it's momentum. It's, it, things can change very quickly, and so it's never over. Um. Set up for Van Akron, and Van Akron with the kill. Scotus is a well-oiled machine. They really do a lot of things right. Here you get a chance to see again just the strong attack that, that Scotus comes. Ben Akron really does a nice job there looking to see where she is attacking against the block. Stephanie Cruz on the serve. Tough set. Winkleman sends it long. Scotus has to try to keep it alive. Great Brennan hustle. gets it in a way. Oh, what a play. Hyde in the middle to Sullivan, and it's blocked away. Four-hit violation. Actually never got over the net. And a point for Scotus, it's 8-2. Great hustle by Scotus, too. They pursued that ball, and you just saw him bust back in. Um, Centennial tries to run that quick system again to try and beat the block, but wasn't able to convert on it with an air. Winkleman off the top of the tape. Great hustle again. Scotus is all over the floor. Sent over, barely in the kill. Kelly Heyman, if you do things right, sometimes you get lucky, and that one fell right in. Yeah, a little luck never hurt anybody, and that play was a little bit lucky. That's good. 8-2, SCOTUS. Centennial trying to work back with the serve, Casey Winkleman. She's a good server, one of the better ones on the team. Moser's try. Good up by Winkleman. Batted right back, though, by SCOTUS, and they get the side out. Yeah, anytime that ball's up at the, at the net, um, you're going to have trouble. These SCOTUS attackers are up there ready um, to fire back at you. 8 to the lead. SCOTUS out in front. They won game one 15-0. Van Akron, tough serve again. 
Centennial's got to get it over. Good job by the Broncos. Hyde. Quick set for Swanson. Good up in the back row by Van Akron. Far side set. Good up by O'Hare. And into the net. Set a little bit low that time, and Swanson couldn't get it over. Right, difficult ball for her to convert on, and just a little bit low. She tried to get up there as quick as she could, but you can see couldn't quite get to the ball while it was above the tape. 9-2 the score. Scotus with a lead. Nearly an ace serve. Good job handling by Winkleman. Watch back. Four hit violation. It never got over the net. And Centennial gets it back on the side out. 9-2 and back to serve for Centennial. Andrea Sullivan. Piles tried. Blocked away. And a kill for Heyman. And a point for Centennial. It's 9-3. Heyman really has kind of picked things up here in game two. She's trying to talk to her teammates right now and try and get some um, fire in there, a play. And, and an ace serve will help that fire as well. So she's making sure she's giving credit back there. Good job. Andrea Sullivan and Kelly Heyman, two of the seniors, to lead the Centennial team. And the kill for Scotus gets it right back right in front of Keely O'Hare, and the Shamrocks will return it on serve. Again, the uh, Shamrocks are really doing a great job getting a one-on-one -on -one situation there. They're really um, pulling the middle blocker of Centennial all over the court. Hide to try Heyman again. Watch back. Hide to try Swanson now. Grennan now in the middle. Grennan just inside the line gets the point for Scotus. She is just so tough up there. She just does a great job. You can see it. she comes in hard. You can see that strong gather as she gets in there. Really doing a great job. Serving is Amanda Sackett. Just four aces on the season, but a pretty good serving percentage. She serves with a 10-4 Scotus lead. They'll set for Heyman, the lefty. And Kelly Heyman really asserted herself here in game two. She really has. She's done a nice job. It's kind of like she's loosened up here one-on-one -on -one with Grennan. Does a nice job coming around here. She's a, a left-handed person, so the block needs to make sure they adjust to that. Pile the try. Set up this time for Swanson. Nearly the kill. Good job by Scotus to keep it going. Hide to Heyman. Heyman with a kill. And it's 10-5 now, Centennial trying to make a run. They're doing a great job. They're working hard out there, and really, uh, Heyman has done a great job here. She's really sparked her team, being a good, strong attack for them. Grennan to try to put an end to that run, and she does. That's who you go to if you want to stop them, and then it's paid off here. Substitution for Centennial, checking in Katie Lindhorst. And she will replace Andrea Sullivan, give Sullivan a breather on the bench. Lindhorst into the back row. Ten five, Scotus leading with the serve. Hyde to try Heyman, blocked back by Grennan. But Centennial does a nice job to keep it alive. Scotus to try, but a block rejects the shot from Heil. Heyman really, like I said, has exerted herself here. She's really doing a great job. She gets out there, closes well, and you see the good hand penetration as she goes up on the block. 10-5, and back to serve Andrea Swanson. Centennial trying to close that five-point SCOTUS lead. Brennan taps it over. Hyde sets, this time for O'Hare. SCOTUS, what a job by Grennan to keep it alive. Heyman to try. Grennan blocked back, but into the net goes Kelly Heyman and a side out to Scotus. And credit Julia Grennan, who has been from one end of the court. She's been on every inch of that floor diving for loose That's balls. That's right. She's busting after balls. And then you see, as soon as she got that ball up, she's working hard to get back in the middle because she's got to make sure she's ready to block. She did a great job. Look at great that hustle. Great job. And look they at this play. It they keep it alive. Sullivan with the hustle. Hyde to Heyman. Heyman with the kill. And Centennial gets the side out some fire 
in the Centennial Broncos now. Andrea Sullivan ran probably 30 feet off the court to get that ball up. They just subbed her out. She kind of hit her head on the way out, but great job by the Centennial team to get it over and then stay aggressive. 10-5 the score, serving as Heyman. Set up for Van Akron. And not able to be handled by Centennial on the return. It goes back over to Scotus on the side out. Julia Grennan, five state championship teams, two in volleyball, two in basketball, and one in soccer for SCOTUS. So don't tell me she doesn't know about state championship pressure. And that, and that again, it's great to see her being a multi-sport athlete and excelling in all of those, and she can then select what she's gonna do from now on. I'm not sure what she's decided to do. Into the net, they whistle O'Hare, and a point for SCOTUS, 11-5. O'Hare would have had the kill off the top of the block, but she went into the net. That results in the point for Skotas. Grennan to serve. Tough serve by Grennan. O'Hare gets it over. Cruz sets it up for Van Akron. Set up for Winkleman. Down the line. Great, Great get by Grennan. Sullivan battle at the net. Blair to try, Blair to deliver. 12-5, SCOTUS with the lead in game two. Great play, strong play here by Blair, who hits the ball up close in the net. She does a nice job and takes it and turns it off the hands of the blocker. Grennan to serve, SCOTUS up 12-5. Block at the net, but through the block goes Andrea Sullivan, who moments ago you saw her go off. She is back on and gets the kill. Nice job by Sullivan, just really comes in aggressively, and that's really what they need to do. They need to go for it here. Um, they've got nothing to lose. O'Hare to serve. Cruz sets up for Van Akron, and Van Akron with the kill. Side out to SCOTUS, 12-5 the score. One more time, you see Van Akron with the kill right between the back row defenders. Hyde to Winkleman. Great up. Van Akron to try. Good up in the back row by Swanson. O'Hare with the attack. Blair will try now. Blair with the kill. 13 to five, SCOTUS with the lead. Here you get a chance to see Blair. She comes in, she's just got a nice re high reach and does a good job putting it in the scene between the players. Stephanie Cruz to serve. Defensive specialist last year, now the setter. Big swing in the front row, and right into the corner goes Andrea Sullivan with the kill to get it back for Centennial. Sullivan really is doing a nice job. We talked about how she was hustling in the back row. She's doing a great job here, working off the edges of the block. Winkleman to serve. Cruz will set it up far side. Good up by O'Hare. Swanson to try, blocked away. Tapped over and to the floor by Sullivan. A point for Centennial, it's 13-6. Smart spot, she really does a nice job. Wasn't in position to hit it, so made a, a smart play on the ball and gets a kill, gets a point for a team. Winkleman, good server for Centennial. 13-6, SCOTUS leading in game two. They won game one, 15-0. SCOTUS will try Blair, and through the block and home, gets the side out back to SCOTUS. Blair's really doing a nice job up there. The last couple of series through the front row, she's doing a nice job getting up again, driving in. She's a different type of attacker than Grennan, and they've really complemented each other. The serve just long from Van Akron, the side out back to Centennial. Broncos trail Skoda Shamrocks by seven here in game two. Set up for Pyle. Blocked back and to the floor by Heyman. It's been Heyman and Sullivan, the two main cogs for Centennial in game two. Right, they've really picked up the team right now. Their ball handy's been a little bit better to assist that and let that um, attack work, but they've really done a nice job blocking as well. Sullivan with a ace serve. It's 13-8, and a timeout is going to be called by Skotas. The first timeout they've had to take in the entire C1 final. It comes with Skoda still leading 13-8 in game number two, but Centennial on a run. 
Centennial really has just come out and they've been a, a lot smoother this game. They've ball handled better. Um, Heyman and Sullivan really have stepped up their play in the front and with their attack, they've been successful. And we really didn't even get to see them attack very much in game number one because of the ball handling primarily. So um, that's really made a difference for them. 13 to eight, you see there, SCOTUS won game one, 15-0. Reminder, stick around the Class B final coming up. It is a rematch of last year's Class B final. Lincoln Pius X will match up against the Aurora Huskies. And that one was a great one last right, year. Right, it was a great match last year. Two teams are a lot different this year. That they're per They've had a lot of personnel changes and they've made some adjustments, but it should be a lot of fun to see them match up again. Nearly another ace serve for Centennial. Free ball now. Can they take advantage? Hyde to Heyman, great up in the back row by Van Akron. Hyde to Heyman again. Cruz keeps it alive. Battle at the net. Great oh, terrific up. up. Cruz will set Blair. Blair will be just long. And a point for Centennial. The Broncos are now within four at 13-9. Great job, really a lot of discipline play up front at the net. Both teams really doing a nice job getting up there. Blair takes a nice shot there, just a little bit long. Set up in the middle for Blair, blocked back by Heyman into the floor. Centennial is on a roll, they've closed it in three. Here you get a chance to see it's Blair versus Heyman here up front. Heyman does a great job. I really like how she does a great job of penetrating over the net. She doesn't go up. She seals that net, goes straight across. Heyman again off the tough serve. Pyle down the line, and Pyle gets the kill. And Scotus finally stops the centennial run. But the Broncos are back in this one. It's 13-10 now. Scotus, their lead down to only three. Serving is Sackett. Hide the try for Heyman. Taps it down the line and just wide. And just like that, match point number one appears for Scotus. Amanda Sackett, the junior, is serving for the state championship. Heyman to try to prolong the game. She's, she just needs to be aggressive and hit it. She tried to finesse a little bit with that tip shot last time. She's being successful attacking. She needs to go up there and go for it. 14-10, Scotus. Quick set for Grennan, and Grennan goes right through the block. No surprise there. If right. you need a side out, you go to Julia Grennan. And she's going to be tough up there from um, Centennial's really going to need to focus in on her. Match point number two. Moser. Centennial's got to send it over. A free ball now. Cruz taps it over, and Scotus is the state champion in Class C1 for the fourth consecutive year. What a great effort, though, by Centennial. They really did a great job coming back. Um, they worked hard game number two. Had them on the ropes, had them get a timeout there and, and get collected back. Did a great job. They need to be proud of what they did here. They really did a nice job here to get to the finals and played well here, particularly in the second game. I know the Centennial Broncos, as you look in their huddle, are going to be a little disappointed with what transpired here on the court at Pershing Auditorium, but I don't think there's any reason to hang your head if you're wearing a Centennial jersey. Let's take a look one more time at match point, a great decision by SCOTUS's setter, Stephanie Cruz. Right, everybody is keen in on Grennan, and I'm sure that was the focus, and that's logic, that's what you would do. Cruz does a great job knowing that they're not expecting her to take that ball over. Here they're looking to go see, they're following Grennan right there. Cruz does a great job, dumps it right in the middle. Nobody even moved. Look at it one more time. Stephanie Cruz, who was a defensive specialist last year, took over as the starting setter this year. And as a senior, comes up with a play that wins the state championship. And right there. Lands it, right in the midst. And that's a familiar sight. That's the runner-up trophy. A familiar sight for SCOTUS is the state championship trophy. And they are used to this winning four consecutive state championships 
They now have 46 match wins in a row, and that streak will continue into the 1999 season as SCOTA celebrates at center court here at Pershing Auditorium. 46 wins in a row for John Peterson, his sixth state title. For Phyllis Honor, her first runner-up award in quite a while. Quick look at the match stats and SCOTUS. A lot of those, mind you, were gained in game one, which they won 15-0. Pretty even in game two. Right, really. Um, Centennial did a nice job with their attack. They finally got the chance to, to use that in, in game number two. But um, overall, really, the defense, um, SCOTUS really did a good job um, ball handling. And again, a lot of those are from game number one. But you look at the block, Centennial came out in game number two, and I know several times Heyman was up there making key blocks for the team. That, that gave him an opportunity to really challenge here in game number two. You see Centennial receiving their runner-up awards and their medals. Head coach Phyllis Honor crowning her runner-ups. And they should be very proud of what they accomplished in this state tournament. A number seven seed making it to the state championship game is not something that is heard too much of. Lori Hyde. <laughs> Kelly Holman. Andrea Swanson. Keeley O'Hare. Casey Winkleman. Andrea Sullivan. And all of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Centennial High School. trophy. Centennial Broncos finished their year at 20 and 7 after making it to the state finals as the number 7 seed and now the Columbus Scotus Shamrocks will receive their state championship award as you see the runner-up trophy hoisted in the air by the Centennial Broncos and now Scotus will get their awards handed to them. Keisha Kudrin. <laughs> Shanna Melliger. Lori Beller. <laughs> Amy Hesch. Kristen Blair. <laughs> Ashley Van Dyke. <laughs> Stephanie Cruz. <laughs> Amanda Sackett. Megan Pyle. <laughs> Julia Grennan. <laughs> Heather Van Ackern. <laughs> Michelle Moser. And now, for these undefeated, outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 1998 Class C-1 State Volleyball Trophy. Congratulations, Columbus Scotus High School.
I guess it's as close as you can come to a dynasty in the state of Nebraska high school sports, and you're looking at it right there, the Columbus Scotus Shamrocks, winners of their fourth state championship in the last four years, 15-0, 15-10. They win over the Centennial Broncos. Your Class B final is coming up, but more about the Class C1 final when we return to Lincoln's Pershing Auditorium in just a moment. You're watching the Nebraska ETV Network. When your life turns dull, colorless, uninviting, get back to nature. Fresh air, tranquility, peace and quiet. And surprises. Action. Adventure. The chase. This is what being alive is all about. This is Nature, every week. Sunday night at 7 Central Time on Nebraska Public Television. You'll find good TV almost anywhere. But why settle for good when you can have a season of great? Oh, yes, of course. I can hardly wait till I see the great... Great performances. With one look, you know. And you'll find great performances only here on PBS where all the cool cats hang out. It's like great, great performances. NET, Nebraska Educational Telecommunications, is public television in Nebraska and so much more. We're a key distribution center for educational material sent via satellite, fiber optics, and the internet. Schools, colleges, and universities depend on NET's satellite to send distance education material to students at home or in the classroom. Teachers in rural schools can teach students in many different communities at the same time. University and state government agencies rely on NET's video conferencing network to make road trips for meetings a thing of the past. It's all part of NET, educating, challenging, and inspiring Nebraska, the nation, and the world through excellence in non-commercial telecommunications. The robin is chiefly a fruit-eating species, with the fledglings consuming an average of 100 meals a day. At night, the adult remains at the nest to guard against predators. Should danger threaten the family, it will become agitated Dad! and sound a call of Dad! um what honey mom said come inside cause supper's ready <laughs> oh okay <laughs> heeding the fledgling's call the male goes inside where he will eat pot roast Welcome back, folks, to Lincoln's Pershing Auditorium, along with Kathy DeBoer Wieskamp. I'm Kevin Kugler, your C1 champion, Columbus Scotus. They are 15-0, 15-10 winners this evening over the Centennial Broncos. And standing by with some of the state champions is our own Kathy DeBoer Wieskamp, who's made her way down to the floor. Kathy? Hi, I'm here with some of our new state champions here in Class C1. And congratulations, you guys. You're back again. Um, fourth straight. you got to be proud of that. You all as individuals did a great job. Um, really, um, you did a terrific job with your offense running this system. You've kind of changed positions or responsibilities this year from last year. How was making that switch from defensive specialist to, to setter? Actually, it was really tough because... Um, I didn't really set that much last year, and coming in and being at a setter position is really tough, and knowing to watch the other side of where to set and who to set to in times of need, so it was really different. Well, it's a big responsibility. You get a lot of um, responsibility. You get to touch every second ball. You get to make a lot of decisions. Yeah. Did you? That's, a, I think, a fun part of it. Did you like yeah. that opportunity to have a little more yeah. say so on what was going on? I loved it because, you know, you're more part of the team, and 
what you touch, every ball you touch has an effect in what happens in the play, and so it's great. I like it a lot. Well, you did a, a great job, made a great transition. Uh, Heather, too, in game number two, you really kind of uh, exerted yourself. There's a couple times you run two or three times in a row. You got a nice kill on the outside. Um, did you get a little help from Julia freeing you up? She kind of froze them in the first game. They were kind of concentrating on her. Looked like in game two, they were leaving you open. You were taking the opportunity. Yeah, Julia helps out a lot when um, she freezes the middle. And uh, when Stephanie decides to set us outside, then you got one-on-one. -on -one, so it's really easy to, like, get the ball down, or easier anyway. <laughs> It also seemed like you, you guys really, um, you do a nice job running a fast transition. You work on your offense. You feel that that made an advantage. A lot of times you're a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, in practice, that's all we do is just how fast can we do our transitions. And, I mean, it helps a lot because then they're not ready for you to, like, make that quick transition. So it helps a lot. Were you kind of surprised as you started out? You guys um, really did a good job, tough serving, but um, that really had made a key difference in game number one. Yeah, it did. We uh, we did really good this year on serving, and um, Julie had a lot of nice ace serves this game, which helped us out a lot. So. Right. Speaking of Julia, you, you did a terrific job. Like I said, in game one, you came out, you served several points right there in a row. You really, really kind of caught them off guard, and they weren't. You were getting aces, and you're also giving them, getting free balls back off of that. Uh, a lot of people kind of focus on in the front row. You got to make sure you know, but you did a great job in the back row. Yeah, one of my goals this year was to become a better server because last year I wasn't that great, and so I think I really improved in that aspect. And I just wanted to really hit my serves at the state tournament, and I did. Well, it really helps your team. I mean, that's how you score points. You did a good job. I also noticed, again, your back row play. You did a great job ball handling, and that allows the rest of you to kind of do your job, too. Is that something, too, that you've, you've kind of become a key player in the serve receiving and the defense? Yeah. Um, well, to get to Stephanie, somebody has to date it, and so we really worked all so hard at defense, which is our key also this year. So we worked really hard at it, and I'm really proud of them. <laughs> Well, you guys did a great job. You should be proud, and collectively, congratulations to your fine team. Thank you very much. Thanks. Congratulations, ladies. We'll go back to Kevin. Do you have any remarks here to close us out as we get ready for the last final for the night? Remarks to close it out? Kathy, I don't know if I have any remarks to close it out. It's a dynasty being run by Columbus Scotus as John Peterson gets his sixth state championship, and we'll be back with more from Pershing Auditorium in a moment. Hello, I'm Bill Moyers, and you're watching Nebraska Public Television. From Wall Street to LaSalle Street, American agriculture hinges on the action in the pits. And each week, Market to Market provides the information and analysis on the news that moves the markets, aided by a core of crack analysts on the cutting edge of the marketplace. For in-depth market analysis and more, watch Market to Market each week on this public television station. Sunday afternoons at 1 central time on Nebraska Public Television.
At Lincoln's Pershing Auditorium, I'm Kevin Kugler. We're wrapping up the C1 state champion. We have crowned Columbus Scotus as champion for the fourth straight year. And in honor of that, Kathy is standing by with Scotus head coach John Peterson, who almost has his own segment now in the program. It is the John Peterson Show, Kathy. This here is the John Peterson Show. Kevin was just talking about you and I having a regular meeting here this time of year. Congratulations, you're four straight in a row. What a terrific job, Coach. Uh, the kids really stepped it up, you know. Julia Grant the other day said, well, it really makes her mad. Everybody expects this. And, you know, we, it's just a lot of hard work. I've got a lot of great kids, and they just stepped up. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, I really didn't expect it from these kids. And, you know, we just got better and better. I thought we had a great state tournament. They did a great state tournament, but also a great year. You had some tough challenges. You beat Pyatt there in here in our next match, and, and they're a great strong team. You feel that's really something that's really helping you? Well, I no doubt about it. That was a big, really a big win for us right early in the year to beat a team of that quality because they had a lot of people back with just, you know, great talent. And our kids stepped up and played very well, and they kind of started believing themselves. And then, you know, the following week we played Grand Island Central Catholic and, and beat them. And then we go right to, to North Bend Tournament and beat North Bend. So, you know, some of our best competition right away, and we stepped out of the gate and played well, and you know, and, and, and we got better as the year went along. That's what was really important. Well, and that's the thing, you know, you start out strong, and it kind of gives some confidence to your team. You've had a lot of players step in. Um, you have a freshman out there um, in piles doing a great job for you. She really feels, seems very confident out. Well, she really is confident. Uh, you know, the thing is, she doesn't do real well. Got her a little bit in that second game. Can't hit the ball down the line very well yet, but she will. You know, and she hit right in that big block a few times and got stuffed, but, you know, she passes well and serves well, and so I was really happy with how she stepped up. Well, the whole team really, as, as a group, played well. They picked up their level of play here. They came out first game and really dominated, and a great season. Your record, perfect record on the year, four straight. Great. Coach, you've just done a great job with them. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate that, Kathy. Congratulations. We're glad to have you back, and we'll go back to Kevin and get us ready for our final game for the night. Well, thanks, Kathy, and you can even come up here and join me for that final game if you'd like. It's your sixth game of the day and my second, and we will be happy to bring you the Class B championship coming up in just a moment. Your Class C1 champions, the Columbus Scotus Shamrocks, four consecutive state titles.